Here we go. I can't believe we only have 10 episodes left. It's insane. Huh? That's strange. I, I don't understand. I, I thought it was this way. Or maybe that way. Are you lost, Full Metal? Yeah! <laughs> They're so casual after what happened last episode. Right, right. I don't recall anyone asking you to come back. You have got to be Thank you, Ed. You'd probably be halfway to Psycho Town right now if me and Scar hadn't stopped you when we did! Yeah, don't and Reza. patronize me, please. The lieutenant had already talked me down by the time you even showed up. <laughs> you no credit. Keep no credit given. Before the enemy hears us. Listen, even if he won't, I'd like to say thank you. I couldn't have snapped him out of it by myself. This is so bizarre, I don't know like if that means anything to you. I'm sure the last thing any Ishvalan wants to hear is that they've done a kindness for someone like me. Yeah, this is so cool and so weird. Riza <laughs> having a heart to heart with Scar. I kinda love it. It's great for Scar to hear this, obviously, but where it sort of hits me the hardest, I think, is just like Riza having the chance to say this. One thing I think about a lot in regards to pain is that I think the sadness that you experience is sort of less enduring long term than the sadness you create. Doing terrible things or doing harm, that's what really sticks with you. That's what's hard to cope with because you fractured your idea of your own self. And Scar for sure has done terrible things, right? But I think when it comes to the Ishvalan War, Riza is going to pay a different kind of cost than Scar paid. And I'm not downplaying the tragedy for Scar, but I feel like in terms of the burden, right? Like the guilt, this conversation means a lot to Riza to be able to say this. Because she's obviously still horribly tormented by what she's done. And the flashback last time with her asking Roy to burn her skin off really drove that home. But you did. Roy having a bunch of emotions right now, probably. So thank you. Your gratitude is unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, what do you really want him to say? Episode 55, The Adult's Way of Life. Hell yeah, this is my kind of adulting. <laughs> right, right. Copy that. The soldiers at Briggs making it look easy. Cease fire! Cease fire! I didn't know, uh, cease fire was in the Briggs vocabulary, but okay. You were using the tank as a distraction to hide your true purpose, using her alchemy to dig that tunnel! Hmm. <laughs> All in her uh, bathroom slippers, no less. It's getting bad out here. We have a large number of pale humanoid monsters on the loose. <laughs> They're hard to kill. It's okay, you can call them zombies. They're man eaters. We need to destroy them right here, right now. <laughs> Wasting no time. And Buccaneers ready. Yes, General. Man, how the Brig soldiers just make all of the Central soldiers look totally irrelevant. For the soldiers at Central, this is like the worst, most traumatic day of their lives. For the soldiers at Briggs, this is a Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, what's next? Oh yeah, white humanoid monsters. No congratulations team, no time to pat yourself on the back, because patting yourself on the back is weak. And as we know, only the strong survive. And General Armstrong has been more than happy to enforce that rule on the officers of Central. From now on, I'm in command. As of now, good luck to you, man. Good luck. Are you gonna take Bradley's chair? I don't think you're ready for that, dude. The Fuhrer's chair. No, the no, no, no. Throne. If we win this battle, it just might be mine. No. Spoiler alert. I haven't finished the show, but it's not. Well, that happened way quicker than I thought. <laughs> he didn't even get to touch it. This is what your masters wanted for all of you men. <laughs> oh yeah, Sloth, still chewing on this rock. That monster can still move. How many times? I remember my first homunculus. As many times as it takes. <laughs> Hell yeah. That spirit though. Living up to the Armstrong name. He really is a tenacious one. I love that shot. Oh, is he going to be useful? Such a stubborn woman. Stubborn is an understatement. Wow, look at you. That's the power of Armstrong leadership. Run now while you can. What? You're not going to run. This way, please, quickly. Major, go now. You would have me run away from this. The mere thought of fleeing, of leaving the battlefield in disgrace. I swear on my life, such a thing will never happen again! Not again, yeah. Good. Just don't die. Props to these soldiers for actually being able to hold him back.
<laughs> you refuse to run. Hey. That's impressive. You're a fine man. Now it's over for Sloth. I've already got a man a hundred times finer than you. No, that is no. Stop. I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> that is impossible. That would literally destroy the earth if there was a man a hundred times as amazing as Alex Louise Armstrong. Don't get me wrong, her husband is great. I mean, he's he's a strong guy, obviously. Have you seen the orange sparkles? Have you seen the way he takes the shirt off, though? Then again, let me not take this personally. I admire the fact that she loves her husband that way. That's some real love and dedication. Even though we haven't seen all that much of them time-wise, it's clear they have a great relationship, a great marriage. Fellas, you better get yourself a wife that loves you like... Izumi loves Sig. Someone who believes that you are a hundred times finer than Armstrong, even though that's a total lie. And who are you? Hmm. I'm the one person Female to successfully officer. break into Briggs. You must be the indomitable General Armstrong. This man. is a clash of wills that's right here. Of yours, the one who has the mohawk, he asked me to come and help you. Such a pain. It's about to be a real pain with Izumi here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There he is. Alright, so you better earn this new reputation you have. Pretty good, pretty good. Good start. Very strong entrance. Take your shirt off. <laughs> yeah, real recognizes real. Alright, alright, he's growing on me. <laughs> They're really doing this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes! <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> Instant friends. Bonding through muscles. I believe it. I get it, I get it. I thought it would be Izumi that finishes off Sloth. Little did I know it would be this epic bromance. The power of muscle, man. He has orange sparkle too! Is that it? He's taking a lot of abuse. You can finally rest. He's dying like oh no! Such a pain to think about it, but such a pain living to. It's so bizarre, you know. I was just about to say, like, yeah, I guess like sloth isn't really the, you know, the one I would feel anything for. <laughs> And it's kind of true, like, compared to Envy's death, that was super huge, you know? Sloth doesn't have the same depth as the other homunculi, I think, but it's still sad in a way, just because it's a tragic existence. And I think, similar to Gluttony, unlike Envy and Pride, they are sins, but they're not these deep, sort of, soul-threatening, existential sins. Gluttony and Sloth, as sins and as characters, don't really trouble me or threaten me, you know what I mean? There's an innocence to them in this show, where they're kind of simple, or they're kind of naive, or childlike, or something like that. And so it does kind of suck that that was their life, they didn't really have much of a choice in the matter, and then they just die. What was Sloth's life? He dug a tunnel his entire life, never got to rest, finally finished it, had to fight, and then was destroyed. So yeah, not my favorite homunculus, but respect for, for Sloth. R.I.P. <laughs> well, he didn't run away this time. There's some redemption for you. Besties! <laughs> oh, I see. Sig's sparkle is yellow. Was that a smile I saw just there? You're severely injured. You should take it easy. <laughs> Now that's rich. We adults very well can't be caught lounging about while the youngsters do our fighting for us. We carry the burden of this world now. But none of us is going to be around here forever. We have to show the next generation how it's done. <laughs> I'm you loving these sparkles. We'd like to help. I like how what Olivia Armstrong said there mirrors something similar to what Roy believes, right? Like, Roy's whole thing of you protect the ones close to you and then they protect the ones close to them, etc. She says that since they're the ones currently alive or, or in power or whatever, they are the ones responsible for holding things up. I like this idea of, like, having a web where each point on the web, each node, does their part and is responsible for doing their best, you know what I mean? Because you can imagine that really working, right? Like, if everybody shoulders their own burden, it seems to me like the net result of that would be greater than the sum of its parts. And I think that's exactly what's happening. That's what we're seeing in the finale, right? It's like, Everybody's sort of showing up. They are helping each other. They are stepping in and filling in each other's gaps or weaknesses or whatever. And they are looking out for each other. And so it's like this incredibly strong feeling. I won't give him a chance to catch me. Here we go. Full 
Full metal oh, Olivia and Alex, nice. Full metal Carly? <laughs> okay. This is quite the reunion, and yet you're stone-based. Here we go. The diss track continues. You're so much less fun than you used to be. Gluttony, envy, wrath, pride. Those are the seven deadly sins of man. In excess, any one of those will ruin a person. Even so, you must understand them all to understand humanity. Otherwise, your knowledge remains incomplete. Why would you sever them from yourself? Interesting. So that somewhat validates the feelings I had when we first saw Father, where I felt like he was weird, or he was off, or he wasn't all there. It makes sense in hindsight because he was removing or separating key elements of himself. But why would he sever them from himself? I guess his disgust for humanity? His desire to be more than human even though he was born from humans? There is something to that, right? Like, he obviously does understand humanity. And in some ways, their understanding of humanity surpasses expectations. Like, even Pride is talking about the goodness of his mother, right? But even in all that, there is an underlying disgust for it all. might be the idea. For once, listen to me! Is he actually trying to reach him? Please, be more careful. Fighting has never been a particular specialty of mine. I feel like this is a taunt in a very subtle way. Hohenheim's playing it real casual as usual. But you know he's having a hard time because he took his hands out of his pockets. That means it's legit. I see where Ed got it from. Why would you create the homunculi? Treat them as children. Have them call you father. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Back when you were an arrogant speck in a flask, you used to scoff at the very notions of community and family. But actually, family is what you wanted more than anything, wasn't mm. it? You wanted what the humans have. Wow. So it's similar to what they were talking about with envy, right? It's like I was just saying last episode, right? It's like, the things you really hate are things that are on some level important to you. I feel like there is no strong emotion without deep personal connection. It's really easy to be resentful and feel threatened by and want to destroy the things that you want but feel you can never have. That's such a sick, twisted way of thinking about Father that despite all of that, he's creating his homunculi family because that's what he wants. What's Father's rebuttal? Running away. Great rebuttal. Where did he go? Is he holding back until the transmutation circle is activated? Oh, he's back. There is no part of me that wishes to lower myself to their level. Instead, I shall become a far more perfect being. There is a philosopher's stone buried within you. I intend to take it. He's absorbing it like he did with his monkey like children. What did he feel? So I finally elicited a reaction from you. What have you done? You might say that I've simply done what you wouldn't. You don't realize. You have cast aside something every bit as important as your emotions. And what could be so important? Don't expect to win this battle easily. Not when you're fighting us. What does that mean? So I have a bunch of questions there. What was Hohenheim willing to do that Father would not be willing to do? I'm guessing it's connected to what we saw of him, like, using the souls he had for something. He changed something about his composition that alarms Father. Maybe he gave up some control? Or he's, like, more integrated. Give it up, it's no use. The tire is definitely stuck. They broke it on Pride's face. Dr. Marco, please stand back. Mr. Heinkel and I can handle this on our own. Well, I'm sure you can, but still... Is that who I think it is? Let us take care of it. Just walking back to Central. Get yourself to the operations center. And I mean now... This girl likes him. Oh, right. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get yourself a wife. A headshot! Finally! Well, it didn't work. There goes that. Will you be taking over the command here, sir? 
I don't know why anyone would sit there and make themselves such an easy target. Let's go. Buccaneer squad has just taken the main gate. That took there like five no seconds. There was resistance and few were injured. Yeah. We also control the main entrance. They've secured tanks and are currently taking up positions. And that's how Olivier Muir Armstrong became the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> we are now in control of most of the Central Command Center. We've done it. We've beaten them. I feel like this is partly a setup. I'm afraid to trust. <laughs> I guess the colonel didn't make it here in time. He's a little busy. Can I feel good right now? Is is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> and judging by the mess I see, it would appear that things have gotten rather out of hand in my absence now, wouldn't it? As of now, I am personally taking command. We will get Whoops. rid of the rebels. All available central forces. It's time to fight. He's back, King Bradley. That bastard's still alive? Where is he? Which he was side never will he dead. attack us from? <laughs> But, does he know about what happened to his wife? It's interesting that it feels like sort of a heroic return. Man, what a good episode. That was amazing. That was so full of heart and humor. I love the Sig Armstrong stuff was just top tier. Didn't know I needed that, but I did. I really did. I also love Izumi meeting Olivier Armstrong. They seem like a really good pair. I love how we have this brief moment of victory right before Bradley shows up. I've been waiting for Bradley to arrive. Like it's been obvious that he, you know, the train thing didn't kill him. He's not gonna die off screen. And it was sort of foreshadowed a little bit by like everybody looking at the chair. One person trying to take the chair and immediately dying. Olivier not wanting to touch the chair. And then it feeling like a big homecoming when Bradley strolls in. What'll be interesting to see though, is that I don't think that Bradley returning will be as clear cut as like, well, I'm back and everything's gonna go back to the way it was because they tried to kill his wife. His wife's a radio star, so he's gonna get wind of some of this. I really like the Hohenheim father encounter, although I'm still kind of chewing on what exactly Hohenheim meant. I'm guessing the thing that father gave up that's important is his humanity, or at least some of the good elements of humanity that the, the main characters represent, and that's gonna be what defeats father probably. But I'm not exactly sure what father discovered when he reached into Hohenheim or how that's connected symbolically. Maybe Hohenheim humanized himself more somehow? He like relinquished some of the power? We did see him release I guess some of the souls that were in him not exactly sure but my intrigue about father has increased this episode like it's interesting what Hohenheim said about how he actually desperately wants to be human and he wants to have a family in some sick twisted way that's what his family is I don't know there's just so much going on with father I gotta sit on this a little bit longer and see where it goes but yeah so that's the end of the first episode of our final 10 in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood which is crazy I'll see you guys next time for episode 56 where I'm very excited to see what role Bradley will play now that he's back